Okay, hey there everyone. Welcome back to another piano tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to play Hometown by 21 Pilots off their album Blurry Face. Uh, this song has actually grown on me pretty exponentially this year. Um, it's been one of my favorite songs for most of this year, I'd say. And uh, yeah, we're just going to dive right into it. I do want to conserve time, so I will refrain from being too discursive or anything like that rambling or whatever, so uh, yeah, let's get to it. So this song is essentially a chord-based song with a few fluctuations here and there. However, you shouldn't have too much trouble with it, so yeah. It's gonna start out like this. You've got inverted C major chord, so you got G, C, E. Left hand's just playing C. In this case, it's just playing the root note for the right hand chord, so you got inverted C. Then you're gonna go to a G minor seventh chord, which I like this chord, you know. Um, it really does make this song great, but uh, it's uh, not your typical cliche of chords, you know, it really um, makes it special. But uh, you've got G, A sharp, D, F, so you're playing the full chord, so left hand just playing G. And then third chord's going to be an uh, inverted A sharp major chord, so you're just going to move down, you just move your thumb to F, and you've got F, A sharp, D, F, left hand just playing A sharp. And then the last chord in the sequence is going to be a uh, inverted D minor chord. So you got just all you, all you do from here, just move your index finger from A sharp, whatever fingers on A sharp, to A. And then you've got an inverted D minor chord, and then that's F, A, D, F. And the left hand is going to play a D octave this time. And then you go back. So it's the only time in the whole tapestry of the intro where you're going to play the D octave on the last chord. All the other ones are just individual notes. This. Left on the left hand, then the octave. So yeah, that's how that's gonna go. So just work on that for now. Pretty simple, right? Um, that's a great thing about it, really. But uh, after that, you play that twice in a loop, and then you hear uh, like this. I guess you know what kind of sound. It's not like a piano, but it's like you know um, this kind of sound coming, and you got. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the kind of sound you have coming in, obviously, as you know, listening to the song. However, on piano, you're just, you're just gonna play this uh, after you've played that twice. Um, uh, the verse comes in, then you got, so you just got, uh, I'll just show the right hand first separately, so you uh, don't get confused here. So E and G, then you got e and G. G and A sharp, oh, F and A sharp, F and A, again, E and G together, G and A sharp together, F and A sharp together, F and A together, and that just repeats, and you play that a few times all the way up until the post-chorus part. Now, you don't have to play that if you don't want to, like, you know, do that and play the chords with the left hand and sing, then you can just play the verse intro chords and just sing and do that. That's fine, too. In fact, that's what Tyler does in the uh, Sleepers version, which we'll get to now for the chorus, because there is a slight variation which you can play, not the actual way that the song goes about it. So, um, before that, though, basically, while you're playing these little... These little bouncy things, right? Yeah. These little bouncy uh, triads, you're just going to basically play... The left hand just going to play root C, so while playing that, then a root G minor and then a root A sharp major chord and to a root D minor so again you got first chord second chord third chord fourth chord so yeah one more time I put it in perspective this is, this is how it should sound So yeah, it should sound like that. So once you've got that down, moving on now, you do that a few times, you sing the verse, and then all the way until the post-chorus, pre-chorus, rather, and then you got the... Um Where we're from, there's no sun, our hometown's in the dark. Where we're from, we're no one, our hometown's in the dark. Our hometown's in the dark. 
so yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. So I don't want to like play and not teach. Obviously, I want to show you it, but uh, I'm just trying to put it in perspective. So yeah, bear with me with that. Um, so the pre-chorus part is this. So again, um, you're just going to be playing pretty much what you were just playing here, the two notes together. Instead of playing them, uh, you're going to play them like individually now. Instead of playing them together, what you just did before for that like trancey part. You're then gonna, on the uh, pre-chorus part, you're going to like play them individually. So you're going to go. Pretty much it's the same thing, same two notes as the little trancy part before, so. So that's pretty much how that, how that little, you know, riff goes, which is actually the, you know, same thing as the chorus, but it's just played an octave higher and it more prevalent and trancy rather but where, what that is is going to be this i will try and show you with one finger however i always end up messing up when i show you with one finger because i'm just not good at playing with one finger and then you know without messing up because i just don't do that at all and i don't prep for this so yeah uh it's going to be this i'll try anyway Then you go to the chord because before the actual chorus comes in, that trancy part, where it goes up and it just is so more, you know, powerful and more atmospheric. Before you play that, you actually play this D minor chord, inverted D minor chord, the D octave to left hand. So, yeah. Now you know what that is. For, that'll be the same for the chorus. I won't need to show that again for the for the uh, chorus part because it is exactly the same thing, just an octave higher. So just keep that in mind because it will come in useful and it'll be the same thing. So it'll be even easier for you. One of as many things to learn. So while you're playing this though, you're just gonna play G and C with the left hand. Then you're gonna play G and A sharp. Then you're gonna play D and D, A sharp and D. Then you're gonna play A and D. Then back to G and C. So yeah, pretty much this is how it's sound now. I'm just showing you individually because sometimes it's easier to do that instead of showing it all at once. Because then you're wondering which hand should I focus on. So that's why I'm doing that. So you go. This is how it should sound. Just practice this so you get it down. Pre-chorus part now. So yeah, that, and, then that, and then it leads into the chorus really smoothly. So, yeah, so basically, um, that's how that goes. So you got... Dun, 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 dun. So you got... Just showing that. And then it goes to the chorus. Now, this is the bit I want to point out before that I mentioned. Now, some of you may know there is a sleepers version of the song where Tyler plays pretty much most of the same things that he plays accordingly to the studio version. However, on the chorus, he doesn't play what the bass is playing in the actual song. He plays his own improvisational left hand, kind of like broken chords back and forth, or whatever you want to call it. Like, going back from power chords. Like, um, it's a pretty common thing for, uh, you know, it's a common thing to do when you're just playing on the piano separately without any other instruments accompanying it. So, yeah, without any other musical accompaniment, it would make sense to do that. However, I'm just giving you the option. You can do that, or you can just stick to how the bass goes in the song. It's up to you. So I'm just giving you the option. I'm going to show you both ways, though. So the chorus now, uh, what are you going to do? I'll show you the song way first, the studio version way, and then the, the Tyler Sleepers version way. So you got this. So the same thing that I showed you before, it's so the same thing. But the left hand is going to do this. So you got... So that's how it's so yeah, basically the left hand is what we're gonna focus on now because the right hand is just the same thing but an octave higher to what it does in the pre-chorus. So um the left hand's doing this, so you got So that's pretty much what the left hand does, okay? So again. So yeah, that's pretty much what the left hand does. So that and the left hand does that on every chorus. It's pretty much like I guess it sounds like like a bass or whatever it is in the song. If it's the bass playing that in the song, then that's what you're gonna play with the left hand. And the right hand just gonna be doing this, as you know, what I just showed you before.
So yeah, that's pretty much what the right hand does. So together, it should sound like this. Once you practice that enough, it should sound like this once you've got that. And then after it does that a few times for the chorus, then it comes into like verse two, and you got. So yeah, sorry, uh, that's how, it's pretty much the same thing, so the difference is when, when you come into verse 2 now, after that, um, but actually, real quick, I did say I was going to show you uh, the sleepers version part, so that's why I just showed you now, the left hand is just playing what the... Uh, Bass is playing in the studio song. Now, I did say the sleepers, so the sleepers version um, is just gonna basically be the right hand, Tyler plays the same thing, the right hand, you know, the. But then, but then what he does with the left hand is he just goes, he goes. So just focus on the left hand. I'm gonna play the right hand in sequence with this so it'll sound better, but just focus on the left hand because this is what Tyler plays with the left hand on the sleepers version for the choruses, so he goes. That's pretty much what Tyler plays. So again, it's just essentially this. G. A short interval. So you got C, G, C, G, D, D, G, D, A sharp, F, A sharp, F, D, A, D, F. But then, but then obviously, the second time, he goes up higher. So the first time, You go down to this D, this one here, this octave, you go down to D, A, D, A. The second time, same thing. But then, you go, instead of going down to this, you go up an octave and play D, A, D, A. So same thing, but you just play an octave higher on the last part, on the last time you play it. On the, on the second time. So, then after that, it comes into the verse 2 again, and it repeats, and then you play that loop um, twice. And then, after that, uh, you actually go, um, when it, on the, um, put away, put away, all the cards your father said, put away, put away, your traditions believe in what I say. The first time you play that, once, you don't actually play any chords, you just hear this trance, the trancey kind of part, whatever it is, playing there. That other kind of keyboard effect, kind of doing this, it does that once, and then the second time, then you, then you play the chords. So same thing that I told you before, that... Then you go back to this uh, inverted D minor chord real quick. You can, you can add this A if you want, um, that's optional. You can just play this or you can go add in this A right here. It's up to you, but anyway, that's how that, that's how that part goes, guys. So, moving on now, um, yeah. Uh, after that, it then, um, so then, it's the same thing, these chords again, sorry, third. Those chords repeat a lot throughout the song, um, so then after that part, so again, you go. And then it goes back to the, uh, pre-chorus part again. This is the second time it does this, then you go. Where we're from, there's no sun, no tons in the dark. Where we're from, same thing. We're no one, no tons in the dark. And yeah, same thing again. So it's pretty much exactly the same thing, guys. What I showed you, the pre-chorus is playing exactly the same thing as the trancey part on the chorus, which is the prevalent part, you could say. But it's just an octave higher. It's the same thing. It's just the left hand that then does this instead. So yeah, pretty much now, moving on, it's the same thing, so there's no point showing what's repeated throughout the song, because I only just show it to you once, then you can remember, you can rewind or pause, that is the magic of YouTube, do not 
keep, always remember that, guys, because a lot of you say I go too fast, but remember, you can always rewind and just go over the same parts over and over again, because I do need to try and conserve as much time here. So, um, where have we gone now? So basically, it repeats all the way then, and then it goes to this part where you get the, there you go. After the second chorus, then it comes into that part. So you got the, so I guess after coming out from the second chorus, you've got, so, you'll, so if you're playing, assuming you're playing the studio version way, you'll have this, you'll have the, uh, so then you can play, uh, what I play is, you actually hear a G beam play after that part, so I just play the same thing as here. The same uh, chord as the intro chord, C of the left hand, G, C, E, but I just add my pinky to this G up here, and then I go, and then you play that, and then you hear the, this is like the mellow, kind of subtle, um, uh, bridge kind of part, it's not like a bridge, it's just kind of like the part where it just slows down, and just kind of goes, That's how that goes. So same chords I've heard you before. So you got this. So the right hand's gonna play. Just focus. Just focus on the right hand. So you got. So you got. Sorry. So that's how that goes again, guys. So again, it, it's just this. But then play the D more lightly than the other one. So you got. And that, so that's how that goes pretty much. And all you're gonna do with the left hand while playing that is just playing these same chords that you play for other parts of the song, which I've showed you already. It's just gonna be root C chord, root G minor, root A sharp, root D minor, root, so yeah, pretty much. Root G sharp major chord. And then after that, little loop comes in once. Then after that part, then it goes to the, um, the other kind of like where it like breaks down and it's like more subtle and it's almost like a more noise reduced um so it's kind of like so pretty much what you're gonna play now is the same thing the you know the classic riff except now the left hand is gonna be playing the bass part for the chorus um because before when you play down here it would just be playing you know just chords, I guess, but because you're playing with the right hand, you have to just go with what you can go down down here. You just play what you can play. So, um, in this case, it's just playing the bass again. So you got. And then it goes, and then they have the breakdown of electric drums, and then it just goes right into the last chorus again and it's just really awesomely enlivening personally for me it's just uh it really is uh pretty uh breathtaking that part but um pretty much it's got dance vibes it's just such a fresh show can't emphasize that enough um but essentially um almost there now guys so congrats if you've made it this far but um, basically now it's the same thing, but just one thing to note real quick is before you before it stops, so you got the so yeah, that that's when you stop. If you're wondering, you know, that's if you stop. So the last note you play with the right hand before the breakdown of electric drums. So that do 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 do. You know the part I mean. Um, basically, the last note you play with the right hand is gonna be. Is this A sharp here? So just keep that in mind. And the the last note you play with the left hand for that part is gonna be um, this D. So you got. So you got. So that's pretty much how that goes, guys. So as soon as you played that, then you just stop. Don't play anything. Then just you know, envision and rehearse the uh, electric drum in your head going, breaking down and then just go in. Uh, you, should, you should have the timing, right? You'll know, because if you know the song pretty well, you'll know how long it is. It's like a few seconds. Um, like, and then it, the last outro, and then you come into the last chorus. Now, that's pretty much the same thing. So there's no point showing that again. It's just the... So 
So yeah, same thing, but then after you've after you played that then, it's played that four times this time, because it plays it twice first without any singing, then it goes again, so you play it four measurements now, four um, than usual, twice as long as the previous chorus is, because it plays twice without any singing, and then the singing comes in, then you go, after twice playing it, you go. There's no sun, there's no sun. Back to the same thing again. Then this part again. This little do 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 little thing. You could say this is kind of like the mini like intermission part of the song if you if, if you wanna think of it like that. I don't know, but I just love this part because it's like the. So that's how that goes, guys. So again, it's the same thing I showed you. These chords again, you just play those chords to complement while you're playing. Play the D more lightly than the other notes. So then you play that uh, once, actually. But for the outro, what you, what you can do, you can play the chords for that part. However, what I actually hear in the songs, you hear more of this. You hear more of that, like more broken chords being played. I think Tyler plays like broken chords instead of just playing the chords like he did before on the previous section of this part. So uh, what what I do is this, I go, so after the last part of the chorus, the last chorus, um, you go. That's pretty much how I finish it, guys. That's pretty much how the outro is, and it is more like that. I don't know if it's exactly like that, but that's how I do it. It's more it's more accurate than just playing chords because you do hear more individual notes being played for the last part, like broken chords, if you want to think of it like that. So, again, I'll just show what those broken chords would be because you know that that's the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is so you go so first one then to G then to A sharp major. And then to D. And then you go. And then the last chord I finish on is that chord. And that should sound like really accurate how it finishes in the song if you listen to the instrumental version, because that's what I did to get more accurate with this. Uh, so you got C octave here. The first time you played the C octave down here. Um, pretty much. And then my is going to be C. Yep. First chord of the song pretty much you just got G C E so yeah so you got so one more time lovely jubbly and that's how it finishes guys great song um definitely been probably my favorite song for most of this year like I've said it's been my jam I've had it on repeat it's just it never gets boring. It's always um, resonating to me every time. So yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy learning this, everyone. Um, I will be doing more videos uh, soon, so uh, stay tuned. If it helped you out, uh, feel free to like the video, share it, um, whatever you feel like you wanna do to show that uh, you really got something out of this. It is much appreciated. And if you wanna stick around and be notified, then feel free to subscribe and stuff like that. And uh, you'll know I hopefully should see when I'm doing a video. But, um, yeah, uh, until next time, everyone, have a great day, and uh, always remember, keep it fresh. See you guys. Where we're from, there's no sun, our hometown's in the dark. Where we're from, 